at Maynard Evans High School in Orlando, Florida, Dawkins was probably the best high school basketball player ever and one of the best people I ever met, his prep coach Fred Pennington told Inside Sports. That team won the state championship in 1975. Hoping to follow in Moses Malone footsteps, the 18-year-old Daryl Dawkins renounced his college eligibility and applied for the 1975 NBA draft as a hardship candidate. The Philadelphia 76ers made him the fifth overall pick behind David Thompson, David Myers, Marvin Webster, and Alvin Adams. According to the New York Daily News, when Dawkins made his debut with the Sixers, New York Knicks guard Walt Frazier took one look and said, I bet his teachers call him Mr. Darrell. With his size, speed, and touch, Dawkins was expected to take over the league, but he handled the expectations in typical fashion. When I walked into the league, they wanted me to be Will Chamberlain right away, without one minute of college ball, he told the Daily News. I can be Will Chamberlain. Will is much taller than me. A raw talent who needed time to develop, Dawkins languished on the Sixers bench for his first two seasons. As a rookie in 75-76, he played in only 37 games, averaging 2.4 points and 4.5 minutes per game. The next year, he played a limited role during the regular season, but began to emerge during the playoffs. The Sixers advanced all the way to the NBA Finals that year, and Dawkins was called upon to help battle Portland's Bill Walton. The Trailblazers won the series in six games, but Dawkins earned respect among the Philadelphia coaching staff, averaging 7.3 points and 5.4 rebounds per contest in the postseason. In the 78 77-78 season, Dawkins finally found a regular role coming off the bench for nearly 25 minutes per game. Now robust 20 years old, he averaged 11.7 points and 7.9 rebounds and ranked second in the league in field goal percentage at 57%. On well, the club that now included Julius Irvin, George McGinnis, Lloyd Free, and Doug Collins, the Sixers made another solid postseason run advancing to the Eastern Conference Finals before losing to the Washington Bullets in six games. Prior to the 78-79 season, Philadelphia traded McGinnis to the Denver Nuggets for Bobby Jones and Ralph Simpson. The move was made in part to clear space for Dawkins on the Sixers' front line, which included 6'11", Caldwell Jones. Over the next three seasons, Darrell Dawkins and Caldwell Jones split time at the center in power forward positions, and Dawkins had his most productive stretch of his career. In 79-1980, he averaged 14.7 points and a career-high 8.7 rebounds, helping the Sixers back to the NBA Finals which they lost to the L.A. Lakers in six games. In a game against the Kansas City Kings in November 1979, Dawkins threw down such a massive dunk that the backboard shattered into tiny shards, sending the Kings Bill Robinson dunking. Three weeks later, he did it again, a few days after the NBA ruled that breaking the backboard was an offense that would result in a fine and suspension. Dawkins named the backboard breaking dunk the Chocolate Thunder Flying Robazine crying, teeth shaking, glass breaking, rump roasting, bump toasting, wham bam, glass breaker, I am jam. He named other dunks as well. The rim wrecker, the gorilla, the lookout below, the in your face disgrace, the cover your head, the yo mama, and the spine chiller supreme. The sisters also kept a separate column on the stat sheet for Dawkins' self-created nicknames, Sir Slam, Dr. Dunkenstein, and Chocolate Thunder. Also, he claimed to be an alien from Planet Loverton, where he spent his all-season practicing interplanetary functionship, where his girlfriend Juicy Lucy still lived. In the 80-81 season, Dawkins produced a 60% field goal percentage, second in the NBA to Artis Gilmore at 67%. Dawkins averaged 14 points and 7 rebounds for the year, but Philadelphia failed to return to the finals. The club met the Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals and lost in 7 games. The Sixers suffered another postseason disappointment in 1982 when they reached the finals but lost to the LA Lakers in six games. Frustrated with the team's inability to handle Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Sixers management began to shake up the center position. First, Philadelphia traded Dawkins, who nearly missed half of the 81-82 season campaign with injuries to the New Jersey Nets for a first-round draft pick. Then the Sixers sent Caldwell Jones in a first-round pick to the Houston Rockets in exchange for Moses Malone. At 25, Dawkins joined the next club that included Albert King, Buck Williams, and Ernest Burson. He had two productive seasons in the Nets uniform before injuries destroyed the rest of his career. In the 82-83 season, Dawkins averaged 12 points and shot nearly 60% from the floor, ranking third in the league in field goal percentage behind Gilmore and Steve Johnson. The next season, he poured in a career-high 16.8 points per game, 59% field goal shooting, and grabbed nearly seven rebounds per game. Dawkins also set a dubious NBA record that year when he committed 386 personal fouls for the season. 
The 83-84 campaign was Dawkins' last full season. Injuries limited him to only 39 games in 84-85. Then a back injury in the 85-86 season all but ended his career. At the time, Dawkins averaged 15 points and shot 64% from the field, but the injury sidelined him for 31 of the Nets' final 32 games and led to abortive playing attempts over the next three seasons. With New Jersey, then the Utah Jazz, then the Detroit Pistons, Dawkins kept trying to come back, but his back wouldn't let him. He only played 26 games from 86 and 87 through 88-89, finally retiring at the end of the 88-89 season at the age of 32. He attempted a comeback in 1994, attending the Denver Nuggets training camp, and again in 95 with the Boston Celtics. Dawkins also spent several seasons after 89 playing in the Italian League for Torino, Olimpiano Milano, and Telemark Forelli. Upon Dawkins' retirement, many hearken back to a classic Dawkins saying, When it's all been said and done, there's nothing left to say or do. Following his NBA career, Dawkins had a brief stint with the Harlem Globetrotters, followed by a season spent with the Sioux Falls Skyforce of the CBA in 95-96. During this season, the Skyforce games versus the Florida Beach Dogs were covered by ESPN as the Florida featured former NBA center Manute Bowl. ESPN couldn't resist the novelty of Daryl Dawkins versus Manute Bowl. In 2005, along with former pro basketball players, Dawkins auditioned for an NBA analyst position with ESPN as part of the network series Dream Job. He was the head coach of the ABA's Newark Express. He was also a player coach for the short-lived Winnipeg Cyclone. He was the head coach of Allentown, Pennsylvania-based Pennsylvania Valley Dogs of the USBL until they folded. On August 20, 2009, Lehigh Carbon Community College announced that Dawkins will be the head coach of their men's basketball team for the 2009-2010 season. Dawkins is the author of Chocolate Thunder, The Uncensored Life and Times of Daryl Dawkins, which chronicles his own and off the court life as an NBA star. In the book, Dawkins writes some of the racism he encountered during his NBA career, playing alongside Sixers superstar Julius Irvin in his off the court experiences with drugs, parties, and women. Daryl Dawkins was briefly married to Kelly Barnes of Trent, New Jersey. Kelly Barnes Dawkins committed suicide on November 1, 1987, back home in New Jersey. Dawkins was on the road with the team at the time. He is currently married to his wife Janice, and they have three kids, including one daughter with Down syndrome from Janice's previous marriage. Dawkins appeared in the NBA game NBA Ballers and in the ESPN NBA 2K video games as a reserve member of the 80s Legends East team. This is the bio, Chocolate Thunder, Daryl Dawkins. Thanks for checking me out on Nothing But Net.